your attention, kids and queens of the Archer Kingdom. My name is Artemis and welcome back to our Death Battle Grind. We are finally caught up. It is time for Blake versus Mikasa, uh, Ruby versus Attack on Titan. My girl Blake, let's get this going. I love um, I love Ruby. That has never been in question. I don't really care too much for Attack on Titan. I'm sorry for all the Attack on Titan fans out there. But um, honestly, uh, when it comes to Ruby fights, I was a little. I'm, I, I am biased, but I can respect. Um, I can respect the fighters when they're shown. Like I can respect Tifa um, when Tifa and Yang came out. I can respect those two. I can respect Tifa. I love Tifa. I love Final Fantasy. Just seeing Yang win left the bitter taste in my mouth, but I understood why. Um, seeing Yang versus um, uh, Yang, seeing uh, Weiss versus that persona, uh, that persona character. I knew Weiss wasn't going to win that. We all knew. We just thought that um. Uh, Rooster Teeth um, Death Battle was gonna uh, um, pull some favoritism on that, but no, 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 no. We all knew Weiss was going to lose that. And now we have Blake versus uh, Mikasa. Um, I'm actually kind of, I'm actually, um, I feel like Blake is going to win this. That's not my bias talking, that's just my, that, it, it, uh, actually it might be my, my um, bias talking, I'm sorry. This, I'm sorry this is going a little too, um, if this is getting too long, let's just get to the fight. If you guys enjoy these um, death battle reactions and want to see more, please hit the like button down below, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. Let's get this started. Three, two, one. See you in volume nine, Mr. Teeth. Blake Belladonna, the feline huntress from Ruby. Yay! And Mikasa Ackerman, the giant killing scout from Attack on Titan. These two Yay. reluctant heroes are fighting for a better world. What'll happen when they go toe to toe to see who's the swingiest and the cuttiest? He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a, a death, death battle. battle. Let's go! Blinked! Those who make peaceful revolution impossible will make violent revolution, revolution. inevitable. I wonder if JFK was thinking about anime cat girls when he said that. Despite the world of Remnant being home to a plethora of magical beings, the Faunus were subject to discrimination from humanity. Yep. That's so dumb. How can humans be racist against Faunus? Aside from looking slightly different, they're basically exactly the same. Oh. I get it. For most of her youth, Blake Belladonna worked with the Faunus activist organization, the White Fang. But when her parents expressed concern at its growing violent tactics, <laughs> really she tune in, Yang! <laughs> Dog <laughs> social interaction, Adam. Wow. Girl supremacist. Wow. Believing the Faunus deserved to rule the world <laughs> instead of humans, Adam Taurus turned the White Fang into a terrorist organization. With the young, impressionable Blake in tow. Now Blake got to put her superhuman faunus abilities to the test as a gorilla fighter. She's not a gorilla, Wiz. She's clearly a cat. You dingus. That's not what As I... a clearly cat faunus, Blake's got superhuman strength, speed, and endurance. She can see in the dark and even pick up on sounds regular humans can't hear. Blake has also unlocked her aura, the manifestation of one's soul. Similar to the Eastern concept of chi, Blake can use her aura to passively withstand intense damage. Though, if it's overtaxed, she will be as Broken. defenseless as any ordinary human. Her aura survived this huge flying monster called the Nevermore crashing into her. Twice! Measuring Twice. the size of the Nevermore compared to the stone structure it shattered, we can gauge it had to have fragmented over 2,000 cubic meters of rock. That means Blake's aura ate over four tons of TNT without even breaking. I guess you could say she, no, sold it. Eh? Uh, eh? Don't try that again. We're gonna have to cut you with a sword as sharp as Gamble Shroud. It's everything you've ever wanted in a sick anime combo weapon. Part Katana, part, part Kasurigama. Katana. And it wouldn't be Ruby if it wasn't part Also gun. a gun. <laughs> Hell, it's sheath is a sword too. That's just showing up. Yes and it I is. Like it. The 96 meter long elastic ribbon attached to the Katana's hilt lets Blake use Gamble Shroud as a grappling hook for maneuverability and creative attacks. An invaluable asset for the White Fang and her new boyfriend. Well, until he threatened to blow up a bunch of innocent people. Now, instead of a bad boy, he's just a boy that is bad. Horrified, Blake turned her back on Adam and the White Fang. Yes! And for the second time in her life, she ran away. It's like running away is her superpower. In a sense, it is. Blake's aura allows her to manifest a unique ability, or semblance, called Shadow. Born from her desire to escape, Blake can create a brief, intangible clone for deception, evasion, or even to propel herself through the air. She can even combine them with different kinds of dust, which is basically magic gunpowder. 
Fire dust clones will explode on impact, while ice will freeze you solid. Though, once she runs out of aura, that's it for her semblance, too. Yeah. Uh, Wiz? Buddy? <laughs> Man, it killed him. And it wasn't even on purpose. <laughs> and don't worry, just some biological cloning. It's a hobby. Don't ask if I'm the original. I genuinely don't know anymore. Alone again, well, Blake dang. lacked purpose and a place to call home. Until she reached Beacon Academy. There, she'd learn to be a huntress, a soldier of peace sworn to protect the land from monsters and any that would do it harm. And she wouldn't do it alone. Blake would join up with fellow huntresses in training, Wei Shi, Yang Zhao Long, and Ruby Rose. Team to Ruby! Team Ruby! With a W. She didn't just find <laughs> with teammates, a w. but friends as well. Uh, feelings gross. Don't worry, the power of friendship is the vegan exam without her. any academy man, training. Let's that's go. You're even better at it. She's defeated the gangster Roman Torchwick, the kaiju side Si Fei Long, and the assassins Mercury and Emerald, and they could dodge natural lightning. Comparing the distance they traveled relative to the lightning bolt, we can determine they were moving over 26,000 meters per second, nearly Dang. 80 times the speed of sound. She even managed to stand up to Adam and all his mom just doesn't understand energy with the help of a new, way less toxic partner. So long, you abusive a-hole! <laughs> no easy feat considering Adam was strong enough to pulverize uh, this Oh, Adam, so much wasted potential. Slides, a feat worth over four tons of TNT. Not too bad for a bootleg Virgil, and Gamble Shroud could take hits like that over and over before breaking. Despite her troubled past, Blake would never stop fighting for a better, more peaceful, more equitable world. She was done running. With her friends at her side, she would face the future head on. So long. <laughs> Let's go, Blake. All right, time for Attack on Titan. To scenic Shiganshina. Enjoy the rustic medieval architecture, hearty populace, and oh, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> that can't be good. Yeah, Cowering can't be good. Can't be good. Walls, the last remnants of humanity were driven to near extinction by the arrival of the monstrous Titans. Ugh. Despite that, little Mikasa Agerman lived a happy, normal life until her parents were brutally murdered in front of her. But never fear, she Una reversed the shit out of those assholes with the help of Aaron Yeager, another pint-sized psychopath in training. Adopted by Aaron's parents, Mikasa and Aaron somehow lived a happy, normal life. Until the Titans attacked again. Until all their friends and family were brutally murdered by Titans. I'm sensing a pattern here. Yeah. With barely anyone in her life lasting longer than a 25-minute episode, Mikasa became Aaron's guardian angel. Certainly a valuable asset to Eren, who devoted his life to exterminating the Titan threats. Together, they joined the military and got their hands on some sweet Titan slaying gear, the Vertical Maneuvering Equipment, or Vimi. Also known as Omnidirectional Movement, or ODM gear in the anime, it allows Mikasa to fight the towering Titans at their own level. ODM gear comes with two 20 to 30 foot long iron wire spears she can separately aim and shoot that'll hook into any surface. They'll allow her to swing around like a steampunk Spider-Man. She can zoom Which is actually really cool. A dime with a special While I don't like um, watch the Tackle Titan like re um, religiously, I can yeah, respect the weaponry and Ooh. how these people fight. Boy. I'll get another clone. <laughs> Mikasa's ODM gear can propel her at speeds up to 366 kilometers per hour. That's almost a third the speed of sound. Assuming she can reach top speeds in a second, that's over 10 Gs of force, 10 times Earth's gravity. For reference, astronauts can stand about 3 Gs of force during liftoff, and fighter pilots can withstand up to 9 Gs for a second or two during aerial combat. Even just 6 Gs for a sustained period of time can be fatal for a human being, but Mikasa can survive almost twice that much and fight giant monsters at the same time. That yep. insane speed makes her especially deadly when she whips out her special titan slashing swords made of ultra hard steel. And that's exactly the term I'd use to describe myself after watching what they can do to a titan. Despite their name, they're rather fragile, at least relative to the super tough titan skin they have to repeatedly cut. So Mikasa carries a set of 12 that she can easily dispose of and replace mid-combat. 12! Yeah, that kind of nice. became a problem when some super intelligent titans started sporting crazy tough armor. That's when Mikasa breaks out the big guns, the Thunder Spears. 
essentially proto bazookas, thunder the spears. thunder spears are thrown like javelins. They're sharp enough to pierce even the armored titan's impenetrable hide, and once their fuse is severed, they'll explode, devastating Coolio. the range. Shattering the armor is no joke. It was tough enough to tank punching a hole through wall Maria. By measuring the size of the gate in comparison to, uh, let's go with this guy. We can determine the armored titan violently fragmented over a thousand cubic meters of rock. That'd take over 18 tons of TNT, enough to level a city block, and the Thunder Spear shrank it. No surprises here. If you're too close to one of its blasts, it's game over. Yeah. Despite the awesome power at her fingertips, Mikasa only really joined the military to watch over and protect Eren. Like a loving mother hen of death. And that became of death. way harder <laughs> once Eren learned he could also turn into one of those super intelligent titans. Now humanity's greatest weapon against the Titan menace, Eren was at the center of all major anti-Titan operations, which meant Mikasa was there too, ruthlessly dispatching anyone that might harm him. Get over yourself, Eren. So what if your childhood home was destroyed by a Titan? You're living rent-free in this girl's head, and it could be worse. You could be Armin. Man, like she's programmed to protect him. You're not off base. Mikasa's last name isn't inconsequential. Ages ago, the Ackermans were bioengineered to be subservient super soldier royal guards to the mighty Eldian Emperor. Well, wherever all that shit came from, Mikasa's got the Ackerman blood coursing through her veins. The same blood that gives her a fraction of a Titan's power without transforming. Holy crap! It's that power that allowed Captain Levi, another Ackerman, to dodge point-blank bullets. That's over Mach 2, and Mikasa can easily keep up with him. It also lets her subconsciously tap into the combined experience and battle instincts of Ackerman's past. She's like the avatar of Titan murder. Unfortunately, this blood bond with Eren means that even when he goes too far, she's obligated to protect him, kind of like a robot. I don't buy it, Wiz. She doesn't love him because of her DNA. She loves him because he's the only one who stood up for her when she couldn't stand up for herself. When she looks at him and the rest of her friends, she sees a hope for a brighter tomorrow. Wow, Boomstick. Wow. Was, was touching. And she has fart powers. Well, it's nice so elastic. <laughs> the word of this. No point. It's time for a death battle! <laughs> Blake, what? Hey. Reading Ninja. Uh, is that the, the man with two souls or, um, or Ninjas of Love? Ninjas of Love, okay. Hey! I said get the hell! Girl! Yo, you just... Yo, you don't mess with a bookworm and her books. You leave that alone. Are those two sets of ears? She must have four times the hearing. Four sets the hearing. Could they not get the voice actor for Blake this time? <laughs> Ooh! Oh! <laughs> I said this is actually really good and attacking me from behind Blake knows how to adapt she's okay come on all right let's see come on come on Blake come on Uh-oh. 
Gotcha this time. Oh, Blake's dead. Blake's dead. And still ah, she lost an arm. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's it. That's it. That's it. Wait, what? You better run. <laughs> okay, I'm calling. Okay, 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 okay. Let me like. Say okay, 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 okay. Let's talk about this for a minute. <laughs> I'm calling death battle BS on that fight. I'm sorry, Blake. I'm so sorry, but no, that would never happen in a million years. That would never happen in a million years. I'm getting over my Ruby bias. Don't get me wrong. I still love Blake. I love Ruby, but no, that was so bad. That was so bad. <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> Oh my god, that was so bad. I'm sorry, but oh, Misaka, I'm sorry, you should have won that. You got robbed. You got robbed. <laughs> like I said, I'm oh my god, that was just that was just plot armor. We all know this. <laughs> Okay, let's just see how it goes. Let's just see how they talk about this. I told her not to get too close to them thunder spears. Oh you my gosh. Here on Mission Narration from Beyond the Fourth Wall. Despite Mikasa's overwhelming mm. and frankly terrifying tenacity, Blake's varied arsenal and powers gave her a clear edge. <laughs> the ODM here allowed Mikasa to keep up with Gamble Shroud's agility, but in terms of offense, Mikasa was kind of a one-trick pony. And that's especially compared to the Swiss anime knife that is Gamble Shroud, which could stretch 10 to 16 times longer than either of Mikasa's cables. Blake's variety of shadows she could spam at will kept Mikasa guessing, and her aura allowed her to survive any attacks that could land. To be fair, the Thunder Spears were a different Also, now she and Yang are matching because of that arm. Because of that arm. survive around four tons of TNT, while the Spears explosion could dish out over 18. But Blake's far greater speed made her nearly impossible to consistently hit. While Mikasa could keep up with characters that can dodge bullets, Blake could keep up with characters that can dodge lightning. In this case, nearly 40 times faster than Mikasa. And those Thunder Spears are meant for big, slow titans, not human opponents, so it's unlikely she'd ever get a solid hit in with one. In that same sense, Mikasa's Ackerman heritage couldn't save her either. It may give her generations worth of combat experience Avatar style, but almost all of it was against titans, not a fun as huntress like Blake, who has powers the Ackerman family has never seen before. Coupled with her Odium Gear's limited fuel supply and breakable swords, Mikasa just couldn't end the fight before her own options ran out. Mikasa had guts, but Blake's speed, versatility, and sick anime combo weapon gave her the edge. It may have been a gamble, but Blake had the spirit to win without a shadow of a doubt. Uh. It's Blake Belladonna. Thank well done, Blake. <laughs> Look, I'm conflicted because I keep thinking that it's death battle BS, but on the but like another side of me is like, yes, she won. Let's go, Blake. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm conflicted. I've been waiting for to like react to this one throughout this entire death battle grind, and I'm just like, wow, I'm so conflicted. I don't know how to feel. <laughs> Actually, let me know in the comments. Who do you guys think should have won? Did Blake? Did you guys think Blake should have won? What do you think? This was death battle BS. Anyways, this has been our death battle grind. We only have to wait for. Oh wait, why am I stopping the video? We gotta see who's next. Stay tuned. We gotta see who's next. Next week. But you can always get more death battle right now by clicking one of those boxes right over there, and by downloading the battle music linked down below. Who's next? Poe. Poe versus Iron Fist. Let's go!
May 16th. Oh, yo, that's gonna be that's gonna be epic. That's going to be epic. Oh my gosh, guys, I know both. Oh my gosh, this is going to be a great. Next week is going to well, not next week. You know when the death battles start coming out, because those are going to stay consistent from now on. When the death battles do start coming out, they're going to be start um, being consistent and stuff like that. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed. This is going. This is the la we finally caught up to death battle and wow. Actually kind of, I'm actually kind of sad. I went through all of this for the past few, um, the past hour or so. Oh my gosh, I feel so sad. What am I gonna watch now? Oh yeah, let's get back to Red versus Blue. I should really get back to that. Anyways, like I said, I hope you all enjoyed. Please hit the like button down below if you want more. Subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. And I will see you guys for the next death battle. This is Artemis Arrow signing off. Have a sensational night, day, whichever. See you guys later.